Hey, this is Tyler with ASAP, and this is episode two of Aftermarket Online. We've got a, a good group of people here today. Uh, we've got Amanda, as always, and then we have Jesse and Luke from Raptor Series. And so this is really going to be a dive into kind of their experience with the aftermarket industry, their experience through e-commerce um, hurdles and and what they've seen over time. Uh, we're going to really just kind of chat about their whole their whole take on it. Uh, Amanda's got a lot of great questions for them, and and I'm excited to hear about their uh, experience with data from ASAP uh, from their end, because from our end, it's it's always been one thing. So, Amanda, uh, will you say hi? Hello, um, guys, Jesse, Luke. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit first about your history. I mean, this industry is always interesting to me. Uh, people move around. I'd like to know from both of you how you started and how you wound up here. Uh, so which one of you guys would like to start first? Yeah, I can go first. Uh, this is Jesse here. Um, can I tell you a little bit about my backstory with the company? Uh, I've been with Raptor Series since 2007. I actually started in the warehouse, believe it or not, and Helped build the racks from the very beginning, and uh, first role here was warehouse management. You know, I kind of went into customer service after that, and pulled my way up through the ropes, and uh, somehow I ended up here dealing with some data. So it's been an interesting experience over the time that I've been here for sure. That that's a long time for one company. That's fantastic. Um, I and I'm going to get to you, Luke, in a second, but I want to tell you that. I, I see a lot of movement in the industry, right? I get to talking to someone at some place and they're very dedicated and I call back at a week and they're like, he's not here anymore. And it's really uh, encouraging to know that you've been there that long because it tells me a lot about the structure of the company um, and their their in, investment into their employees, their staff. So that's awesome. You just you just bumped Raptor Series up five points. Now, Luke, can you bump them up a little more? Uh, I think I can. Uh, well, it's kind of a kind of a similar story. Um, you know, I started out in the warehouse as well, um, pulling parts, and um, from there um, went in the same role as what Jesse was doing with the customer service. Uh, started with some uh, started doing some technical support. Um, from there, moved into sales and marketing. Uh, now we do a little bit of everything from sales to marketing uh, to research and development, um, purchasing, you know, so. Yeah, data is just scratching the surface. A little bit of everything uh, there. So we kind of get a full, um, you know, full spectrum uh, of the entire business. So it's definitely a, a good position to be in. And uh, we get to see a, see a lot of different aspects. Um, so I want to talk to you guys. I want to ask you. And Luke, how long have you been there? Uh, I've been here since 2012. Wow. Okay, good. So not only have you seen the product from what bare to finished, but um, you also have to deal with uh, getting the dealers, delivery of the product, customer service of the product. Is that what you're telling me, that you guys have wear, you wear a bunch of different hats? Absolutely. I mean, pretty much anything in regards to like whether it's taking, you know, photos of our product or test fitting the product under brand new models. You know, we've pretty much got our hands on all of that. So let me ask you about testing on brand new models, right? So for example, that new Jeep's coming out uh, this year. How do you guys get these vehicles to test them on? Or do you just go downtown and go, Hey, do you mind if we walk up to your truck? How do you guys do that? <laughs> well, we're actually really lucky uh, in our town here, uh, Jasper, Indiana. Uh, all the dealerships are uh, really welcoming. They uh, they let us have to pretty much anything new on the lot. So they actually allow us to take the vehicles uh, from the lot, bring them back to our facility here, um, let us test fit all the products on them. So we've been uh, been grateful that uh, all the dealerships around here have helped us out. It took us a while to get to the point. <laughs> oh, no, that's awesome. Kinda had to build some relationships over time, but... Um, we're definitely thankful for that. So, you guys, you know, I worked with your data. Um, it looks like you guys have put a lot of thought into this. And I got to tell you that, you know, from a web development standpoint, from my, you know, I'm like, um, wow, just so many little details, right? So many little details that make or break this part. 
So um, have you guys ever worked for any of other brands that had different uh, lines? Or is this standard that, that people go through so much in the development, right, with, the, with just how much inches on that? Uh, how do you determine that? How Do you step on it, and if your girlfriend slides off and, and skins her shin, you put a bigger pad? How do you guys do that? How do you guys decide <laughs> how big that pad is? On like well, your step bars. Well, every vehicle is a little bit different, um, so it's hard to hard to pinpoint it down to just one. Um, but pretty much, we just take it case by case. You know, which vehicle, as far as size, you know, if you have a, a Tacoma versus an F two fifty, you know, obviously um, the bigger tubes don't look as good on the smaller vehicles. So uh, that comes into play a little bit, um, and then placement and everything. So um, that's a, it's really just uh, just case by case, and we kind of get feedback from our customers of what they want, and then we just take it from there. And yeah, and what we th- what we think would work for us, you know, if we set a bar, we're doing a test fit on a new vehicle, we'll put the brackets on, you know, we'll set the bar up there, and if we look like you know the the pads go back three inches, we just you know simply make the adjustment. And you guys have the ability to do that. Is this um, all made here in the United States? Is some of it? uh brought in what's what's the process yeah it's all it's all manufactured overseas so I mean, we have to kind of get the specs out and make the adjustments and send them to the factory right and how long does that take once you make an adjustment to get that back no you think probably about um usually the next prototype is about 30 days out yeah yeah we air air stuff back so we'll actually build um we don't have the capabilities uh, to manufacture here, um, but we do have the capabilities to manufacture prototypes. Uh, so basically, we'll make a prototype, send it to our factories, uh, and they'll in turn uh, create a new product <coughs> and uh, send to us for a test fit. All right. So I want to ask you, um, in your opinion, right, the difference that um, – not the difference um, – e-commerce, right? E-commerce is a, a big animal, and so when you're just dealing with, you know, brick and mortar, maybe dealerships that have a performance center or something, um, there's a huge difference in the way you deal with. Here is some stock for you to put on these vehicles, as opposed to here is data to put on your websites. Um, can you guys? Kind of tell me, is there a love hate? Do you like one more than other? What What are the challenges? The different challenges, if that question even makes any sense. Uh, I guess I wouldn't say it's a, it's a love hate. I mean, we want to take care of everybody. Uh, our ultimate goal is to to make sure anybody uh, that wants to have the Raptor Series product, um, you know, has access to it. So um, we try to focus just as much energy, you know, on the e-commerce side uh, as we do uh, in the retail world. Yeah, and they both have different needs. You know, like the retail side, they're you know a lot of those those guys are still kind of old school with the print catalogs, and that is a little challenging when we have things that are constantly evolving. You know, and when they've got it in print, it's it's hard to get that out right away. So the e-commerce side is a little more fluid as far as getting the updated information uh, in a more timely manner. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. Was someone going to say something else? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Jesse, what what was the first product that you guys actually ever produced? Like, what was what was ground zero for Raptor? I'd say that'd be the three inch round step bars and the four inch oval. And then where did you go from there? Like, how did what was what was the evolution of of the company? Really, I mean, we just took it step by step. No pun intended there, but we, uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we went from four inch to, uh, and I don't know the exact consecutive order, but it's like we expanded to like the wheel to wheel applications, and then we came out with the five inch, and we did the five inch wheel to wheel, you know. So we just kept going bigger, and then we got to about seven inches with the SSR boards, and it's really about as wide as you can go, you know, without really putting wings on your truck. So. Um, what's next? You know, we have a lot of things uh, that are kind of being turned around, but as, as far as our new product, we don't quite know exactly where we're heading yet with the new step. I have a question about the catalogs, if you don't mind. Yeah. I hear this a lot from, an, I mean, almost exclusively everyone tells me at some point, oh, I'm busy, 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 I got this catalog. And yet, uh, again, from me coming not from the retail side, strictly from the e-commerce 
it is crazy to me. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like once you print it, it's almost obsolete anyway. It doesn't. I mean, how do you guys stay on top of those catalogs with new parts and discontinued and 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 changes and uh, just the cost of sending it out? Is that really? But I've been told it represents quite a bit of business from uh, the people that that still do that. Um, do you guys have any idea what type of what percentage of your sales happen because of these paper catalogs? I'd say there's definitely a a necessary need for them. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of good that still comes, but like you said, as soon as we print it, I mean, sometimes in the same week, there's parts that are immediately out of date. So, you know, the way things evolve, I definitely see it phasing out for us. I mean, I, I hate to take that away from people who depend on it, but at the same time, you know, if if you got bad information, it's just bad information. I mean, I hate to see them using stuff that's that's not correct, so... Well, I just see it from a business standpoint. I had ordered um, something, a box one time from some company, and I'll be darned if I don't get every two months this three-inch thick catalog, and all I can think of is, my God, I if I wanted your stuff, I'm going to go online and get it. How much? This must have cost a fortune. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, and I have actually spoke with Tyler about it in, um, you know, doing – PDFs almost that are interactive where um, maybe they're clickable links so that people can open it up and go, oh, I like it. Because I understand a catalog looks much nicer than a data sheet, of course, or it looks much nicer even than trying to figure out how to move around a website because of the layout. But, um, you know, do you think in the future that it would be beneficial if you guys had a PDF that when something changed, you just could immediately change it uh, and resend that out with a link that shows where they can get more information. So, right. Um, Absolutely. So, all right. Tyler, guess yeah. what I just got you to do? <laughs> You're going to have New projects. To, right? New projects. No, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. <clears throat> I just, as a business owner, I'm like, Jesus, I, all this money you guys got tied up in these catalogs. And again, if I want something, I want to be able to go, yes, I want it, click, take me to it, um, you know. So so let's talk about your data. So we worked on your data, right? And um, so is it easier now to approve the data? Was it a nightmare for you guys? Um, I know that I warned you not to say anything negative, but seriously, I um, – you know, once we really get into it and we go, oh, and we really look at it, we kind of discovered some things that weren't accurate, right? Some of the things that kind of maybe got lost over the years of nobody really paying attention to some of that uh, stuff. So are you feeling encouraged now? Are you feeling like you have a, a better way to get uh, – product to your dealers for their websites are you happy sad depressed on prozac talk to me about how you feel about working with us at asap on this project well i i don't think there's really anything negative to say um can't nothing's coming to mind so uh, i think you're safe there can you get me one of those prozacs uh -huh. <laughs> good good no, just kidding. No, you guys have been a pleasure to deal with so far i mean honestly from you know, the different companies that I've dealt with personally uh, with the data, you know, like you said, we, we started out with what we were given in the beginning. We cleaned it up the best we could. But, you know, dealing with some other companies in comparison to ASAP, I mean, it's been a breeze as far as availability. You know, when we need to speak to somebody, we can get a hold of you, Amanda, right away, which is very much appreciated. And also just like you had mentioned about approving people, too, as well, like that specifically the insight that we're given when we go in to look at who's requesting our data is really valuable for us. You know, where other times we would have to chase down, you know, specific info. I mean, you guys pretty much give us everything that we need to, you know, be informed before we ever even contact the customer. So that's, awesome. that's definitely nice. Well, good, good. We've and, tried hard. You know, you guys, we uh, we went through building websites and trying to get data and all the frustrations. So. We've tried to make it uh, as easy as possible for 
both ends of it. So I'm glad to hear that that works out well. I'm I'm looking forward to good things on your line this year as you get more exposure, we get more data out to these people. And um, how often do you guys update your your line uh, pricing or new parts? When can we expect some of that stuff? Uh, really uh, don't have any plans for any pricing changes. So really the we we update uh, as needed, but we we are gonna supply the data um, to you guys once a month. So um, at any time, you know, we're gonna basically tell our our retailers, our online retailers, that they can expect to have updated data once a month. And and what do you mean by updated data? Is that new parts? New. It's gonna be new parts, uh, new pictures. If there's any changes to installation instructions. Um, yeah, we've found it's just easier doing it monthly. I mean, if we would release it every week or every other day, I feel like people are going to overlook what's new. Whereas if they're, you know, pretty much trained to to look for what's new at the first of the month each month, you know, we hopefully get their attention. I got to tell you, I have to agree 100%. And I'm not going to tell you which brand does this to me, but I want to scream daily because I get an, an email. I had asked for data when I was building a website once from this company and I get an update every day every day and I've tried I've gone in get me off of this crazy thing I've called I'm I just and it's almost starting to feel like um I think they're they're doing it on purpose um I I, you know people's time and 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 from my aspect and what I see we thought okay let's give them clean data but um God, time is more valuable than anything else right now. They would rather cut you a check than give you five minutes of their time. And so I think it's awesome that you guys are respecting that from the dealers because they've got, just like you, tons of phone calls and emails and customers. And, man, to expect someone to stop daily or weekly um, and update, you're, you're spot on. They will just ignore it and only do it maybe once a year at that point because it just gets so crazy. And then I think that's a, one of the reasons people have outdated stuff on their websites. So um, so you guys have been spot on. You guys have been awesome. I mean, you really you answered all my questions I had, and that doesn't always happen, right? Um, you guys really know your product. And I got to think that dealers or retail customers – really appreciate that when they call in, right? Um, something I've seen since the onslaught of the internet is, yes, you can pick up business everywhere and customer service just went thump, right? Um, I can't stand those press one, press nine, press 12, press, press, and just press because we're not going to answer your call anyway and you're like, <laughs> oh my God, right? Um, oh, yeah. It's just, just that earlier. Right, and, and and doesn't it just make you go? Is there anywhere else I can? I, I I'm not going to do this, right? I'm just not going to do this. And um, I think as long as you guys are keeping your customer service up the way you are, and and stuff, I, I got to think you're. Do you ever get comments from people going, "Thank you so much," because it's rare to get decent customer service. We do, yeah. Um... It's uh, it's one of the things that we've always like tried to keep at the top of our priority list is customer service. It's actually one of our uh, core values uh, with, throughout the entire company. Um, so if you call in, you will get a brief recording. I think you'll have what is it, Jesse? Uh, four menu yeah, you options. You might have to press a button. You'll have four menu options. You know, basically just going to be tech support, customer service, sales, um, returns. Um, so once you hit one of those buttons, you're going to get a real person right away. Uh, it's always the same guys. Um, you know, we're, our, our goal is to, you know, to make sure that everybody's taken care of properly. So, um, there's rarely a case where, uh, where we're not going to pick up the phone or get back with you right away. So it's definitely something that, uh, that we try to, to excel at. Hey, I have a, I have a question. And so, you know, the main idea, right, is to make, make awesome products and then, move those awesome products w what percent would you say um of your business in the day involves e-commerce uh checking websites checking make, making sure people are got the right stuff up uh dealing with data 
I mean, what is that a small percent of your daily headache or is that changed over time? Let's say it's kind of like 50, 50. I mean, we, you know, as far as our service and, you know, the calls that we're dealing with necessarily, I'd say about half, right. I mean, we, yeah, I mean, we've got somebody uh, dedicated here that that does like you were talking about, Tyler, um, with you know going online, making sure that the data is up to date. They've got updated images. Uh, we have somebody that that dedicates some time to that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the what the time is um, that's put into that, but we do have somebody um, that is one of their responsibilities to to do that and follow up with people to make sure that um, since ASAP is providing awesome data that they're actually using it. Nice plug. Yeah. That so, was awesome. But that so, awesome. but so I, I think that that's, you know, that's something that I think a lot of people when they maybe get into this industry don't really account for, right? I mean, if you're saying 50, 50, that's a, that's a tremendous amount of the business model essentially to deal with data and e-commerce when someone is just in their shop and they hammer out a great product for the aftermarket industry and they want to sell that, I don't think that they necessarily put that into account that, you know, you've got, you like you said, you have a dedicated guy doing this this type of work that not too long ago when it was all catalogs, um, you know, that didn't even exist. That job title wouldn't exist. There's a lot of, like, new hurdles. Uh, and so, you know, that I think that's kind of crazy. When, when in your guys' um, development here where you sort of started to, maybe look at e-commerce and online sales and the use of, of proper data as something really important. I think it was, it was shortly after I started here in 2012, uh, our data sheet that we used was an Excel file that was extremely simple. And, uh, me and Jesse both, uh, worked on it, um, pretty much daily, uh, you know, locking it down and then working with, uh, with other companies, find out exactly what people are, are needing and, you know exactly how it's used and um so uh, i mean it's definitely it I mean it took a little bit of time you know to realize exactly how important it was and you know how it was all used and a lot of the information that's on the data sheet was stuff that you know we already had you know centralized on our system but it just wasn't attached to the data like for example the in- installation instructions being hyperlinked and you know all the images everything from standardizing our images. I mean, we had a lot of great images that went along with our products, but they just, the angle was different on the step bars, you know? So we went through and just like redid every single one of them. And, uh, the, the text that went along with the data, like for example, we'd have reg R E G for regular. And then the next line would say regular spelled out. So we just said, all right, this is junk. Let's, let's clean it up, you know? So, and then Amanda took it the next step after that. So we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, no, um, guys, this is, uh, you know, we're still infants in e-commerce. I mean, infants. I think they're going to laugh. Three-year-olds are going to laugh at what we're doing on e-commerce, you know, in 50 years. But it's uh, this whole entire industry, again, comes from passion, not from, um, and I don't want to say, it doesn't come from business. It comes from passion. And because of that, uh, your focus has always been the love of instead of the workings of, right? Does that make sense? Where you guys, um, everyone around you was excited and now trying to work in that technology, um, you know, it's, again, removing the inch signs, right? We're just, just getting it ready for HTML for a website. It's a completely different uh, animal than just putting a sentence in and um, I I think you guys did fantastic and I think that you guys are going to you know smoke them out there personally I can't wait to see your new website when is that going to happen here in the next month or so hopefully yeah that's our goal within a month I mean we're very close we're just really fine-tuning everything at this point so there's a lot of new uh, go ahead no, I was just going to say, isn't it crazy, all the little things on a website, right? You're um, just, you just get frustrated. You're like, just put it up. I want to see my pretty baby. And you're like, ah, right? Yeah. Web- website development has come a long way too, right, yeah. um, than when it was. So 
uh, I hope that your cleaned up data makes it a nice user experience as well. And I, again, I think that the the dealers and the distributors love your stuff. I love it. I think it's priced right. Um, I, I think I've, I've never seen any negative comments, right? So you guys just really knock it out of the park with your product, now with your data. Now, you know, I mean, there's nothing more you can do. Uh, well, I, I, I have to say that when I saw you guys at the uh, the big trade show, right, your booth was set up just amazing, right? It looked really, really super cool. Can you give any behind-the-scenes um, information on what that takes to do these events, you know, these big, huge shows, these trade shows? You know, I mean, what is the process of getting all of your stuff from one location in the, in the uh, world to another location in the world. The, I guess the, the biggest misconception is that it's a vacation. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Which, there's uh, a lot involved. I mean, we Like, for example, one trade show in particular, we, we don't have to deal with for at least seven or eight months, and we're already starting the paperwork. So, you know, when people see that it's a four-day show or a three-day show, I mean, we're six months or more in preparation. So that's <laughs> a lot involved. Um, and so this year at one of those trade shows, guys, don't, do you think that now that you're, um, one of the things on ASAP that I wanted to make sure happened was because of the SEMA show, right? The first year we ever, ever went to the SEMA show, uh, I was just overwhelmed, right? And I was like, wow, wow. And so I collected all kinds of business cards and had all kinds of conversations and then went home and went, oh, wow, um, wait, did I talk to, was that, oh, wait, right? And it just, um, it was just so unproductive, right? I couldn't remember the conversations and I, I'm like, oh, and then you try and call and they're off doing this or that. And, and so I thought about it from the aspect of the manufacturers thinking, my God, you didn't, it's, this wasn't cheap for you to get here. Um, and all you're going to get is, you know, these people getting run through here because there's so much to see. This year at SEMA, um, when you have them and they could just click a button on ASAP and now have access to your data and, and, and have that next step, that next relationship, do you think that's going to help? Um, with some of that relationship building at, at these trade shows as opposed to just giving Luke a stack of business cards on the way home and go, hey, call all those guys and re- ask them if they remember us? Do you think that's going to help uh, solidify some of these relationships by being able to have them click a button and, uh, and, and actually have your data now? Absolutely. I mean, just the fact that we can approve it, you know, like you said, we're in the infant stages of, of this whole overall plan. And, you know, we can have someone walk into our booth now, say, okay, I, I'd like to get your data. You know, we can submit it right there and approve it, and they can walk out of our booth with everything they need to sell our products. So we're and light that, years where we used to be. <laughs> right. I think that's awesome, too. Well, you guys are fantastic, and um, I am super stoked that you guys are on our second podcast. Um I know that we're getting some of the dealers to already listen to it, and we'll get many more. And I can't wait for the future with us, uh, ASAP, and you, and and you know us personally. I think you guys are awesome, and and sharp, and on your game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the future brings for you guys. And I am going to let you guys go now. Tyler, do you want to wrap something up, or guys, do you want to say anything in closing? I would just appreciate you guys having us on here to talk about our, our products and, you know, our relationship that we've developed so far. So, I mean, definitely, um, you know, it's a mutual effort. It's not just the manufacturer doing all the work. It's not you guys doing all It's You really have to work together. So we appreciate it. And- um, one one other question, I guess, is, is what is your kind of like policy on your relationship with your dealers? You know, I mean, I, that's kind of a, a big question, but some, some um, manufacturers have – policies in place to try to make sure that their dealers are getting the most out of that relationship. What do you do to like, make sure that that is, you know, the dealers are, are important. 
That was like seven questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, based. <laughs> no, we we try to just provide the resources. I mean, to show you know how much the dealers do matter. You know, you know to us is our service. Like Luke said, that's our number one. Uh, staple here. I mean, if if there's a problem, we're going to get the customer taken care of uh, by reaching out. You know, when Amanda, when you first walked into the booth at SEMA, for example, I mean, we already have data providers. I was honestly, it was just another business card. I was like, that's cool. We'll check it out. You know, and we did. So I'm really glad we did because we're finding so far it's been a really pleasant experience. And I mean, you know, with our new website, for example, the different things that we're going to be featuring on there, we're always just trying to grow and come up with additional resources for our customer. If you if you can't, you know, have everything you need, then how are you going to sell our products? So right. we want to make sure that we're, you know, we have a list of every vehicle that we don't have photos for. Like, we're getting there. We just right. have to find them. So some of them are a little odd and hard to reach. But when we do find it, we will make sure to get the right information. So. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, and and yeah, it's uh, it's been really cool meeting you guys in person, right? I mean, that's not something that uh, I think this industry has a lot of, right? When you're online uh, with e-commerce, so much of it is just phone calls or emails. So it's kind of neat to to see you guys in person. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, thank you guys so much, Amanda. Thank you so much. This has been Aftermarket Online Episode Two with Raptor Series. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for more. Keep coming back. We're going to keep busting this out. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Goodbye.